when Harry Mason takes his adopted daughter Cheryl on vacation to the town of Silent Hill, their car crashes off the road to avoid a girl, who mysteriously appears from out of nowhere. Harry soon awakens to find his daughter missing and the town enveloped in fog. During his search for Cheryl, Harry will encounter many creatures that are symbolic manifestations created out of the fears of a child. In this video, I'll be taking a look back at the creatures of Silent Hill 1 and analysing them each in turn. And if you do enjoy this video and want to see more, leave a like and subscribe, that way you can stay up to date on all future videos I put up. Before going into the topic of the video, it's best to provide some context to the monsters in the game to have a better understanding of what's happening to Harry. The town of Silent Hill was home to a religious cult known as the Order, who secretly worshipped an evil deity and was led by a group of individuals who had important positions within the community. One of their leaders, Dahlia Gillespie, had the idea that in order to bring their Dark God into the world, believing it would share its powers with the cult, she would have to give birth to a special baby using ritual magics. The baby was named Alessa, who would be destined to bring the creature into the world during her coming of age. But Alessa eventually grew too powerful to control in a time of her childhood life, when she no longer wanted to partake in the cult's dark practices. It was around this time when the Order grew in number and began to take control of the town by using a drug cultivated from a local plant to manipulate the populace into their ways. Dahlia would go on to burn her daughter alive to keep Alessa bedridden and unable to escape. What's worse is because of the deity's power within Alessa, she was unable to die, trapped in her body to suffer. Alessa was nothing more to her mother than an incubator for their dark god while the Order tried to find another way to release it into the world. But it was too late for the cult. As Alessa's power grew, she was able to eventually escape her own body using astral projection. Alessa went further to ensure that even if the cult found her, they would only have a small portion of their Dark God's power, as she split her soul in two, leaving one half outside of Silent Hill, where it reformed into a physical baby. Harry Mason would eventually discover this baby by the side of the road and adopted her, naming the girl Cheryl. Years later, Silent Hill had been abandoned due to the fog brought on by Alessa to ensure the remaining cult members would never find her half-soul. At this point, monsters began to appear all over town. These creatures are symbolic creations made from Alessa's subconscious mind and her negative emotions, brought on by the nightmares of a scared and angry young girl. And it's at this time, and against Alessa's will, that Cheryl would be compelled to return to Silent Hill to unite with her other half-soul. So with that all in mind, let's take a closer look at the monsters. These dog creatures appear on the streets in two different forms. In the fog world, they appear malnourished, hairless, with white dead eyes. While their other world counterparts have bloody rotten skin, with their head, as the name states, completely covered with worms. Both variants move fast, often running circles around Harry before they do a jumping bite attack. Though there is no evidence within the story to reveal Alessa's fear of certain animals, it must be taken only at face value that if they have been conjured here in the town, then this particular animal must have had some negative effect in Alessa's life that caused her anxiety. Their deteriorating skin may also be a physical reflection on the current state of Alessa. Though her ghostly spirit roams free, her corporeal form still remains in the hands of Dahlia a comatose body that is burnt and bloodied. And the worms further support this, as they are decomposers, a species that eat dead or decaying organic matter. First encountered in the cafe, these flying monsters appear to be a hybrid of a bird with bat wings and the torso and legs of a human. These also look malnourished and hairless, with razor teeth and sharp talons. 
while its otherworld variant has bloody rotten skin with the head completely covered with worms. Both variants will attack their prey by either pivoting their bodies to do a bite, or will perform a hit and glide attack by flying over Harry to slash him with their talons. These creatures are a mixture of various things that were combined in Alessa's nightmares from fantasy book stories she used to read in her bedroom. With her fear of adults based on her abusive mother. While the otherworld enemy type is another reflection of Alessa's current physical state. The Mumblers are small humanoids no bigger than the size of an average child. They have three sharp claws on their arms and a large toothless mouth that covers their entire face. Due to censorship, the North American version of the game is the only one that has the grey child enemy type. They are small knife welding humanoids that have cut marks on their faces. Regardless of which region the game is from, both have similar types of attacks. They'll attempt to grab the victim by the legs to immobilize them while doing damage with their knives and claws. If there are a group of monsters, one will try to grab their legs while the others will do a vertical slice attack. Both monster types are likely based on the children that Alessa went to school with. Not only did she fear adults, but also her classmates who would constantly victimise Alessa for being different, and through this abuse, she would grow to hate them. These creatures can also be seen then, with their claws and knives, as an exaggerated form of her abuse. These large insects look like oversized cockroaches, while underneath it, the creepers have an appendage that it uses to drink blood. They attack by biting Harry's feet before scurrying away. Creepers are a manifestation of Alessa's obsession of insects, as seen in her bedroom with her butterfly collection. But this particular insect can also be seen as a fear of hers, likely brought on as a negative reminder of where her burnt body was left, in the dank hospital basement where these creatures usually live. Larval stalkers are dark apparitions that are the size of a toddler with a small tail. They're non-aggressive and seem only interested in exploring, while sometimes falling to the floor. They'll walk right through Harry as if he's not even there, and will eventually fade away. The Stalkers are the larger counterparts who are based on the knife-welding grey children, and are very aggressive. They have the same type of attacks as the grey child, as they'll attempt to grab the legs to do damage, and in a group, one will immobilise Harry, giving the others a chance to strike. Both stalker variants are likely further memories of Alessa being bullied at school. Their ghostly forms can be seen as a symbol of Alessa wanting to disappear, or to hide away from her tormentors. Her ghostly cries can be heard behind a locked cubicle door within the girls' toilets of the school. If the larval stalker's passiveness represents Alessa's innocence, then their violent counterpart would represent her ever-growing anger and desperation. This monster dwells within the school's boiler room in the other world, and resembles a giant lizard. It moves slowly while salivating in anticipation of eating its food, and will attack by launching its head forward to do a powerful headbutt. When the monster receives enough damage, it will open its head, splitting in half to form a giant gaping mouth that can devour its prey whole. The split head is the manifestation of the giant lizard that appeared in a fairy tale Alessa read in one of her storybooks. 
and in the centre of the chamber there's a body that is burning within the fire that symbolises the burning of Alessa by her mother. When Harry reads an excerpt from this fairy tale about the monster lizard, he gains the knowledge he needs to destroy it. After provoking it enough to the point that the monster opens its head, Harry takes one well aimed shot into its throat to defeat it, before he's sent back to the fog world. The Romper is an ape like creature that is hairless with decaying skin that wears a black animal collar around its neck. It disturbingly appears human, albeit one that acts like it's an animal. The game's artwork also reveals that the monster has worms coming out of its large facial orifice. They move fast by hopping along the ground on all fours, and attack by jumping on top of their prey, pinning them to the floor, then chomping on their flesh. These are likely a manifestation of Alessa's fear of adults. Her hatred comes from the only few she ever knew, such as her mother, other cult members, and school teachers. All these adults were either in the order or affiliated to them who participated in Alessa's abuse or failed to do anything about it. The mouthworms are another reminder of Alessa's current condition, while the neck collar represents oppression, as she's only seen as a tool to be used for her powers. Wearing white, blood-stained attire, the nurses will either appear with blonde or brown hair, and with a blue or green cardigan. While the doctors wear a bloody lab coat and tie. But the most distinguishing feature are the parasites that protrude from their backs, causing them to hunch. When the host drops to the ground, the parasite will continue to thrash around until the puppet's body dies. Both nurses and doctors will attack by using their blades to do a downward slice. They will often work together as one will hold on to Harry, giving the others the time to attack with their weapons. These parasitic creatures that possess the hospital staff symbolise control. Alessa knew that the Order were manipulating the town and that the hospital staff were being controlled into doing what they wanted through intimidation and the use of their drugs. Nurses, like Lisa Garland, who became addicted to the substance, was being forced to nurse Alessa in the hospital basement. In Alessa's eyes, the staff were like puppets, and grew to resent them as they helped to keep Alessa's body alive to suffer while the Dark God grew within her. Encountered within the shopping mall of the Otherworld, this giant caterpillar is the larval form of what will later become a large flying moth creature. It uses hit and run tactics by burrowing into the earth, then bursting out of the ground to strike. The twin feeler can spit an acidic liquid for a long range attack just after it surfaces, and can also attack Harry by barging into him before going back into the ground. After the twin feeler has taken enough damage, it curls up and apparently dies. But after a short time, the monster springs to life and escapes from the shopping mall. When Harry reaches the rooftop of the building opposite Alcamilla Hospital, the monster has fully transformed into its final form. The Float Stinger has two types of attacks. It will either spit an acidic liquid at long range, or does a quick jab using its stinger at close range. Both creatures are a direct manifestation of Alessa's fascination for moths and butterflies, as seen displayed on the wall of her bedroom. They could also be seen as a representation of Alessa's transformation into the Dark God, a destiny that Alessa is trying to escape from.
In the sewers deep beneath the streets of Silent Hill are these green creatures that appear to be a hybrid of an insect that also has distorted human features. It has elongated front limbs with sharp claws on its end. The rare limbs appear more human and lets them walk on two feet. They can attack from various positions as the hanged scratcher is able to crawl along the ceiling as well as breathe underwater to be able to ambush their prey. On the ground, they'll raise one of their front limbs to strike downwards while the other limb swipes up for a pincer hit. And from the ceiling, they can hang above their target and swing an arm down in an attempt to scratch their prey. The Hanged Scratcher's appearance may be seen as Alessa's obsession with insects, while its human features and aggressive behaviour reinforce her fear of people. Perhaps their appearance could even be pulled straight out of one of her fairy tales like the giant lizard monster. Neither monster nor enemy, the police officer, Sybil Bennett, becomes host to a parasite similar to the ones that infected the hospital staff. She appears at the merry-go-round in Lakeside Amusement Park, where she awakens the moment Harry arrives. Though she has bloodstains on her back, there's no visible sign of the parasite yet that will eventually protrude from her body. The only signs of possession can be seen with her red eyes. Sybil can do various types of attacks, she'll mainly use her handgun to fire off a single round from any range until she's out of bullets. Up close, she'll pistol whip Harry. And when she runs out of ammo, Sybil will throw her gun away and attempt to strangle him instead. If Sybil is out of sight for too long, the ride will begin to operate, and she'll appear riding on one of the horses. It's unknown who was responsible for Sybil's condition, and the outcome depends on the player's choice. After the encounter ends violently, she falls to the ground and squirms in pain, with blood all over her. But if Harry has the plastic bottle with the red liquid inside of it from the hospital, it can be used on Sybil right away, where she'll collapse and expunge the parasite before Harry stamps on it. At the lakeside amusement park, Harry finds a lesser and is tricked into using a magical item called the Flaros to weaken her. This gives Dahlia the chance to capture her daughter. Alessa's nightmare world then begins to collapse in her weakened state, and depending on Harry's actions throughout the story will determine who he'll face in the final battle. In the non-canon version, it's the incubator that is fought. The two half-souls of Alessa and Cheryl merge into one and return to the burnt body in the wheelchair. Their respective ages of 14 and 7 are combined to form a 21-year-old Alessa. The young woman with long brown hair, wearing a white gown, radiates a godly light, making it difficult to view her directly. She kills her mother with blue lightning. If Harry completes the side quest involving Dr. Kaufman, then the true ending will happen. Kaufman will appear and throw a vial of red liquid called the Aglafetus at Alessa, the same substance used to save Sybil from the parasite. The Incubus will burst out of Alessa's body that Harry will then have to battle. The creature has the head of a goat with a pair of long demonic horns and has a pair of large wings. Its naked human body is missing an abdomen, leaving only the spine visible. The Incubus uses red lightning to kill Dahlia before attacking Harry. Both enemies remain stationary and don't move from the spot. The Incubator stands motionless on the ground and is protected by a force barrier to repel any approach by Harry while she attacks with bolts of lightning. while the Incubus will flutter in the air and strike with bolts of lightning.
It's unknown if the Dark God is meant to look this way, or if it's the result of the Aglophetus releasing the demon from Alessa's body prematurely that made it appear this way. But in the true ending, after the Incubus is defeated, Alessa reappears one last time to thank Harry for giving her the death she wanted and an end to her suffering. She rewards Harry with a newborn baby that he'll later name Heather. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it. Up next, I'll be doing two more analysis videos. One will be covering Metal Gear Solid, showcasing each member of Foxhound and the Genome Soldiers from the first game. And the following video will be on uh, the monsters of Resident Evil 4 from back in 2005. So if you're new to the channel and are interested in any of these, then subscribe. That way you can stay up to date on all future videos I put up. And once again, thanks to all of you who have subscribed and are helping to make this channel grow. So until the next video. Bye everyone.